sprint trains. The organized chaos of flat finishes and one of cycling's most important tactical innovations of the last 25 years. Highly technical and fiercely competitive, just how did teams execute the perfect lead out at such high speeds? To find out, InCycle picked the brains of the best in the business to learn the tricks of the trade for fast finishing. The amount of energy saved by slipstream and by being behind another rider, it can be up to 60%, especially if there's a few guys in front of you, you know? And especially the speeds we're doing in a sprint, Say we're going for five kilometers out, I cannot ride at my max power for, for five kilometers out. Um, so I have to be able to conserve that energy, and that, that comes from slipstreaming. And the more guys you've got in the final, the longer they can pull, the more it saves the energy of the guy behind. So technically you want as many people in the final part of the race as possible, um, because that gives me the best opportunity to, to have the most energy for, for the final sprint. So. It's called a train, a sprint train. It's technically the riders or the, or the carriages just pu pulling each other along, ready for, for the final sprint. Stars in the beginning of the race, if it's a flat stage, uh, there will always be breakaways. So as a team, we're the sprinter. We need to control the breakaway. You can go to Lotto and ask, we put one guy, can you also put one guy to take the breakaway back? So that, that guy will probably have to do the work for about, depends on how long the stage is, but most of the, most of the race, if it's a 200 kilometer stage, you will have to work for 170, 175 K, which is pretty long and makes you very tired. So that guy, we lose. The real chaos starts like already 25 k's out and when teams, especially in the Tour de France, when team, teams get nervous and everybody starts lining up at the front, you really have to, to fight for your position on the last 25 k's and not being caught in a crash or uh, being too far behind. And this is you have to be really, really careful and also think when you ride at the front and make sure you give enough space for your whole team and especially for for your sprinter. And this pretty much goes till 2Ks to go. You need minimum two guys to bring the real train, which is most of the time three, four guys into a good position, which is the last 5K. There you need minimum four guys. You go in the last K, perfectly with three guys. It's two lead out guys and one sprinter. If we talk about the perfect scenario, you bring the last two guys to like 600 meters to go, 500 meters even to go, and then they can play it out with the other teams. But that's perfect scenario, happens like twice a year. <laughs> the lead out man, he has to come to 500 meters, the sprinter in the wheel of his lead out man, the lead out man has to slowly bring the, bring the speed up, not like that. Slowly go to the high, high speed for to launch a sprint. All the lead out men I know, they were always calm, they were very strong, in and out of the race. They just have that little bit of extra feeling, just to keep always the nerves, um, uh, in one piece. A lead out man who panics, that's like a horse with, with a carriage behind. If you panic once or twice, then, then it, it means you just are not ready for that job. He has to be actually a sprinter himself, but not a top sprinter. So he has to be really good in placing himself, but he cannot push the extremely high watts like the like the real sprinters so he has to be powerful and very um, very good bike handles that that's the most important because it's always a big fight there's a lot of stress 
I've ridden with Mark Renshaw for most of my career, and the majority of times, you know, he does a lot of the thinking for me. He's able to stay even calmer than I do, and that's saying something. And uh, if he can take that mental stress away from me, it gives me more energy for the for the final anyway. Um, and so, a lot of the time, it's been he's delivered me to the right place, and I just sprinted. The last man and the sprinter, they really have to connect uh, in and out of the race. They really have to trust each other. And if the, the, the lead out man makes a mistake, he makes a mistake, but the sprinter usually follows. He never doubts the, the lead out man. And that trust you have to build uh, race by race, sprint by sprint, and the better it goes, at a certain point they just feel each other. We've seen uh, a great images of uh, Dan Cole when he was a giant and a lot of shouting. So this is also the different characters. It's like some sprinters don't say a word. It's like Mark uh, Cavendish would barely saying a word. It's a different different mentalities, different personalities, and uh, both ways work. With Marcel was was really special because if you see his sprints, he could really still win out of a position where not many sprinters can win. He can come from three or four. Even two or three lanes back, he can still win. Caviria is, is, is different. I mean, he can, he can go from, from far, he can also win on a short distance. But the main difference is he, he always follows. He doesn't, have, he doesn't need much space to follow. Even in the smallest gap, he will follow. And that's kind of a different, uh, different way of approach, especially for the last man and also for the team. I just see the finish line. I see gaps more than people. Like a lot of guys, they'll see obstacles, they'll see other riders in the road. Whereas I see the spaces between riders, I guess. Um, it helps that I'm small, that I can fit. But uh, when I do go for the sprint, I just see the finish line and, and nothing else. Everybody thinks they're aggressive, but that's just because when they cross the finish line, is so much stress that falls off their shoulders, especially like if they win or if they lose, the whole team has been working for them. So that that pressure during the race in the final is incredible. And then they win and they go because they win or they lose and they start slamming their handlebars because they lost and they know that it's been the work of, of a lot of guys. As a sprinter, you have to win. And the bigger the team, the more you have to win. And you always have to win when the team rides. Because if the team is riding, you're always nervous because yeah, you, have, you have like seven guys who just work the whole race for you to win. That doesn't mean if you don't win, they are upset or they're sad, but you know by yourself, I, next time you have to just, just win again. Um, and that's something a sprinter has to, has to live with. And that's also, why you probably have every generation has only two or three, maximum four top sprinters who really have the, the legs always to, to perform and need it. It has changed, but it's still the same. I mean, it's, it's, uh, I think the first real lead-out train was, uh, was built uh, around Cipollini in our days. Um, I had my train with, with Zanini, Musee, uh, Peters, those guys. But it, it always has been a kind of organized chaos. I think the last team that really everybody worked for, 
the same victory with uh, HTC. And when we had Kim Kirchen going for Chim uh, GC, but still also being there in the lead out, uh, Mick Rogers uh, being up there in GC, but also being there two Ks to go. So I think since that we haven't really seen that anymore. And when teams, especially in the Tour de France, when team, teams get nervous and everybody starts lining up at the front, uh, also the GC teams, they go in for the general class man with, the, with their leaders and what we always see in the first week, then you have uh, Team PMC, Team Sky, Movistar, everybody's lined up plus the, the sprinter teams and you see seven, eight trains next to each other and it looks like more like a horse race.